I wrote a letter to every world leader. Here's how I did it. Meet Leo, the 18-year-old self-development TikToker who sent letters asking for advice from 200 world leaders. The first piece of advice that I got from the president of Switzerland was uh, be as open as possible. Call it cliche all you want, but often, if you're closed-minded, you would never consider that you're not open-minded. We all probably on some level kind of chase perfection, especially if you're a driven person. The issue of course being that perfection is not real, <laughs> does not exist. So once you can get comfortable with imperfection and not be afraid of it, then you can sort of get closer to the everyday fulfillment. Try to help other people in their stories. So if you were to go, uh, they'd be happier because they had met you. And also, I guess, if you're trying to help other people with their stories, you'll probably end up having a good one yourself as well. What's up guys and welcome back to a brand new episode of my podcast Happy Days with me Callum Church. Now for today's episode I'm joined by the awesome student and self-development TikToker Leo Olsen. Welcome to the podcast Leo. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, pleasure mate, pleasure. Do you want to just kick us off by introducing yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Sure, um, so I guess I've been on TikTok for about 18 months now. Uh, and the big shift came earlier this year when I decided to write letters to world leaders, uh, which sort of kicked off me trying to make videos that would help people, um, hopefully provide value. And I guess it's just sort of taken me down that journey. And now I try to just make videos that can hopefully have a positive impact on those people watching. Mm. How do you get involved with the uh, self-development stuff then? Because that's sort of like it's you you try and offer a lot of sort of like advice there but you also take mm -hmm. us through sort of like your journey almost so how sure. did you actually get started with all of that right at the start of all of it yeah that's a, that's a good question um i think it was something i was always interested in especially i think as a student if you're you know a bit of a try hard <laughs> then <laughs> you tend to uh look at a lot of the study youtubers um mm. and a lot of them that quickly leads into the sort of productivity world yeah um and and things like that you know there are youtubers like ali abdal who's mm, quite big now who who started you know with study and then moved on so i think that probably is what got me into the that area and it's the sort of thing of you know once you watch one youtube video you're down the rabbit hole uh mm. so i think that's where it started mm. was there any sort of like particular <laughs> area of productivity which you focused on to begin with or because i know it's quite hard to pinpoint these kinds mm -hmm. of things because it's like a long journey it's hard to sort of sure. like exactly remember but was there anything in particular that you sort of focused on to begin with or maybe something you focused on on the tiktok <laughs> to begin with yeah so i, I think it's really hard the everyone has different terms or like ideas of what productivity actually is mm. and and now increasingly i think there's there's a bit of pushback against the term uh but i guess productivity for me was initially uh yeah probably stemmed from school and then i i guess i sort of thought of productivity in terms of the side hustle that sort of thing and tiktok kind of became that for me so in in that regard it was about you know, maximizing success in, particularly in a career sense. But then I think as time goes on, you get uh, drawn into trying to maximize like most aspects of your life. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. So where does where's that drive come from for you? Because like like you, you you mentioned maybe you suggest well you suggested maybe you might be a bit of a try hard at school mm -hmm. and like you know yeah. you're, you're you're driven for achieving success <clears throat> and such. So. Where's that come from? Like, is there like a period in your past that maybe might cause that or? Mm, so I, this is, I, it's a question that a few people ask me, especially I think um, adults tend to ask me it because I, you know, seem oddly focused for mm. someone who's 18. I think um, interestingly, and it has come sort of from talking to, I have a few friends who are older. Mm. And the, the one thing that we have had in common, despite having, like very different upbringings is that for one reason or another uh our parents haven't necessarily pushed us um mm -hmm. more rather like encouraged and i think if yeah. if you're left to your own devices you're forced to sort of find what you want to do and you become quite motivated to do that mm -hmm. thing um and it was the sort of thing of i, I was actually um i was out yesterday having dinner with one of my dad's friends uh here in london and he said 
you know once you find the thing that you're really good at you you sort of refuse to let anyone take that away from you mm. uh so it is a bit of an issue almost uh or it can be of in the in the school scenario which i guess is where it started once you become the person who tries really hard or is really persistent not only does that become like an identity thing uh but also you feel the need to self-justify because everyone knows you as the person who tries hard so if you're the person who puts this effort in and doesn't achieve the results Mm. then it's a problem so it becomes this sort of self-perpetuating cycle which can become really toxic and not healthy whatsoever um but equally if you if you find something that you really enjoy uh you become so i guess obsessed with making it work and it reaches the point where i don't think i'm really proving anyone wrong anymore even if that's the way i think of it Mm. yeah such an interesting point that you mentioned about the the parents not pushing you and kind of leaving you Mm -hmm. to your own device i relate to that so much and like i feel i feel like when you were talking about that i've just had a bit of like a (laughs) like a light bulb moment for me because i've kind of thought why am I driven at the, at the age I am? Yeah. Why aren't any of my friends sort of like thinking about productivity or self-development mm-hmm. or, or side hustling or, or you know, just getting involved with career or, or, or trying to get a head start in life or anything like that? Sure. And yeah, I mean, my parents are always really laid back. I never had strict mm-hmm. parents. I never had parents that told me to live life by the script and, you know, go, uh, go to school, do really well, um, get a really good job, get <laughs> married, get a get a house you know eventually save up money to retire you know they never really pushed me in any of that and it was funny how it, there were loads of people that were sort of like all trying to set plans for themselves and these kind of things and I was just sat there a bit lost and it, it was in that moment where I was lost in which I found who mm. I was you know who I truly yeah. was and that was just this guy who's obsessed with self-development runs a podcast you know and it's kind of up to his own sort of business but for sure. um, no, it's, it's funny. You also, you also mentioned um, how it can be a bit toxic sometimes mm-hmm. being driven sure. like that. Have you struggled with that toxicity? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think, and and I th- uh, my friends probably more than any other people could attest to this, of it, it becomes really difficult uh, because the, the more, for me, I guess, the more opportunities I've been offered uh, the more you want to work. So interestingly, the more success I've got with TikTok, the harder I work, which is a bit interesting because I, I think ultimately the goal should be to be able to have time for other things. Equally, I think it's this sort of, like we all we all probably on some level kind of chase perfection. Mm. And especially if you're a driven person, the issue, of course, being that perfection is not real, <laughs> does not exist. Um, and I think, uh, so, so I've been sort of working on hopefully trying to get a book deal. And one of the things that I, what I thought was a really good metaphor, and I can't remember who who initially came up with it, but was, you know, we tend to, especially if you're a driven person, you put um, sort of joy and happiness behind doors of like, uh, yeah, circumstances that you have to fulfill mm. so even if you feel like you're quite a happy content person it'll be okay I will feel content and happy when mm. and and that's hugely like that's a problem because there's always going to be another door mm. have, um, you, have you struggled to, to sort of surrender yourself to that and, and stop putting stuff behind doors yeah I think so what's a really interesting distinction <laughs> And I, I feel like I, I just, um, I've obviously researched this quite a bit because I was, I was writing a chapter about it. But so the Greeks had um, two different words uh, sort of around happiness. You had one of their words for happiness was uh, makarios. Uh, and that, that was uh, almost synonymous with like being blessed. So it's a circumstantial thing. Uh, mm-hmm. They used it to describe maybe the gods or something like that. So it's, it's very like, based on what's happening right now, you can say Makarios is like what you feel when everything's going right. It's the the five seconds after your TikTok bangs or something like that, <laughs> right? Uh, and then you have uh, Chiros or Chara, depends on there are different uh, versions out there on the internet, which is a lot more uh, synonymous with like our words of joy now, which means 
you know, just all round uh, like acceptance of life. And what was really interesting with that is uh, the Greeks said that the opposite of chara is an uh, sadness, which would be the opposite of happiness, but it's fear. So the sort of fear of imperfection. Yeah. So once you can get comfortable with uh, imperfection and not be afraid of it, then you can sort of get closer to the everyday fulfillment sort of yeah. thing. So that's the goal. Yeah, fascinating. <laughs> um, it's but fascinating. But hard to do. That, yeah, it's fa- I, n- I never knew that before. So that's, uh, that's, no, that's fascinating stuff. And, you know, all good things are all, all do tend to be <laughs> behind fear, right? You know, it's like... Yeah. You know, obviously, like, people like Will Smith is, like, a big advocate of that, mm-hmm. and it's thrown around a lot in self-development anyways. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, have, is there anything which has sort of been behind fear in your life, which is uh, which you can benefit from? From memory, of course. Yeah, no, it's good. What I think... Uh, okay, the, the, the TikTok is a very mild example, but just mm. if you put yourself out there in any fashion mm. at this age, like, there's going to be a certain level of, like you know, banterous, uh, like, critique of that. That's mm. that's fine. Yeah. Uh, and I accepted that. That wasn't a huge thing. I, I think I've been quite lucky in that regard. Um, but also, I think, you know, hindsight 2020 is, is really easy to say, oh, like, it wasn't actually that scary, even if maybe there was an initial fear when you go into it in the first mm. place. Like, it's, it's really... Memory is so unreliable. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, I, yeah, it can be hard to be clear about what was scary at the time Mm, yeah for sure man for sure so along this whole sort of like journey that you've been on over however many you know some might say 18 years so far you know (laughs) um what's been some of the sort of like key things which you've sort of picked up and and learned the most from has there been anything Mm -hmm. that's been a sort of like a real you know moment where (laughs) it's just like yes Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah no i think So I really wish that it would have been this epiphany that I had, but instead I read a book, which is somewhat (laughs) underwhelming. That's fine, dude. I mean, at Um, least you got the lesson, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is a book that's been recommended by a few other big names in the sort of self-development world, like uh, Noah Kagan, Ali Abdal, uh, big fans of the book. Uh, It's called A Million Miles in a Thousand Years, Mm -hmm. um, and it's by an author called Donald Miller. And I, I'll skip the the plot, but the general underpinning theme of this book is the idea that you should think of living your life in terms of what's a good story. And that was like a big sort of uh, flipping of the switch for me because it's what actually triggered me to send the letters to world leaders, which eventually, uh, you know, got me in talks for a book deal and yada, 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 changed my whole content. Mm. Um, so I think if there's been any turning point especially in like the last six months, uh, that would definitely be it. Mm. What is the story that you want to write for your life? Yeah. (laughs) I know this is such a frustrating question sometimes because I hate being asked what's my goal and some of these sorts of things. Sure. I think, so I think the problem is, right, so issue number one, issue number one with story is it relies on like a, a good story in terms of like a film will rely on like drama, things going wrong, like struggle, And you shouldn't necessarily, like, seek those things out. Like, you shouldn't try to make your life more dramatic or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So so that's issue number one. Equally, you know, like you said, a lot of great stories lie behind sort of experiences of being uncomfortable, Mm. a struggle. So there's two sides to that. Um, Secondly, it can feel somewhat superficial, Um, in terms of just because you're doing something for the story that doesn't mean you should be doing it for like other people's optics Um, it shouldn't be for what other people view as a good story Um, and finally I think a lot of people would perhaps take the um, sort of surface level approach of thinking a good story has to be you know Callum has a huge podcast or like Amy climb Mount Everest like it doesn't have to be one of those like traditional achievements Mm. um I think that a a good story can just, it can literally just be that if you were to like go right now, cease to exist, the people you knew, like on the whole, were like happier because you were in their lives than Mm. otherwise. And I think that's really hard to do. (laughs) Um, But I I think it's it's a great thing to, to aim for. 
Dude, that's powerful, man. That's powerful because <laughs> so many people will sit there and say, you know, I like like you say, I want to climb Mount Everest or mm-hmm. oh, I want to achieve X, Y, and Z. But just to strip it back like that and actually get down <laughs> to the fundamentals of it is 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 important because I think as a, as as a society and, and and as people, you know, we we get it so twisted. You know, we we live our lives by the scripts or we spend too mm-hmm. too long chasing happiness when really we we just need to to settle down and and try and sure. find peace instead, you know, which is something I talk about quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Um so just to strip it back like that and and just, you know, leave the story to tell for other people, <laughs> you know, like a yeah, I think that's 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 awesome. So let's get on to the the world leaders talk because you, sure. you you mentioned you had this sort of like um big idea in that epiphany moment while you were reading that book. Mm-hmm. Where does an idea like that come from? Did, did it just pop into your head, or or did you find inspiration somewhere? I mean, partly the yeah. book, but you know. Yeah, no. So partly the book because in the in the book he tells a story about this family he meets, where the father is. Um, like a consul to um i can't remember the country but essentially you know he meets with a lot of diplomats and he asks his children you know what should we do um to like have a better relationship and then you know one kid says oh we should ask them this question the other one says you know we should invite them around to our house and essentially it's it's this idea of they don't think that anything's going to come of it but then lots of people respond and Mm -hmm. they end up having like some big diplomats like Mm -hmm. come around to stay yeah so that's like the initial rough, okay, important, powerful people in the world could try and contact them. Uh, so then I turned to Google uh, and I was somewhat annoyed uh, to find out that there was this uh, girl, I guess now a woman, uh, called Hunter McLean in the US who had done something similar. She had a website called dearworldleader.com. And I've since like been in contact with her and spoken to her and she's been super encouraging and and uh, amazing to talk to but she had sent letters to world leaders but she didn't ask them for their advice she asked um like something different so then i was like okay sure she she had done something but i can do my own sort of twist on the idea mm. and she, effectively she was a bit of a proof of concept of overcoming the the fear factor because i i knew it, it would probably work mm. um but yeah it was it was more or less just a series of things going right and like you know full transparency when i had the idea i was like okay this would be a sick tiktok series yeah yeah awesome um, yeah so yeah no i love it man i love it and i love the honesty as well because you know so many people paint themselves to be you know a certain image or whatever but <laughs> I, I love it that's partly one of the reasons why i like your tiktok is because it's so transparent um so how many how many world leaders was it in total that you actually reached out to Reached out to, so it ended up being 200. Um, if you want to get really technical with it, it gets kind of complicated because, you know, defining what a country actually is, is, is actually somewhat complicated. <laughs> like the, the UN and the US, or depending on who you ask, have slightly different um, uh, lists. But yeah, I ended up, I think it was about 196 countries, but I'm, um, I'm Swedish, so I decided to go for both the king and the prime minister there and i live in the uk so i went for both the queen and the prime minister mm. and then i also did the dalai lama so that's how i got to 200 <laughs> um awesome. yeah yeah so it was 200 letters i got 20 back and i you know made a whole video about the rejection sort of what i learned uh but yeah i got about 20 letters back currently so that's like 10 percent. but then only really uh 10 out of those 20 gave advice so that's like five percent mm. so it was it was sort of the interesting thing of like I failed ninety five percent of the time with those mm. letters, and yet the outcome was still massive. Yeah, you still succeeded, even though you're not you mm, ninety five yeah, percent sure. of it you failed. Mm-hmm. You still succeed in that, you know. And I think yeah, that's, yeah. that maybe that's potentially a lesson which people listening to this can sort of take away is that you know you don't win without failure. You got you got mm, to sure. you know, push yeah. past it. Um, so. Those, 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 those ten that didn't quite give you advice. What was that? Was that just them sort of saying thanks, but thanks for your letter, but I yes. can't. Or so was it, it was. It was a variation of, I think some slightly misunderstood the question, or sort of gave, sort of said something along the lines of like the youth are really important because rather than like right, giving okay. advice. Yeah. So. Then there were also, I'm pretty sure what I learned was that monarchs just aren't allowed to do this sort of thing. Like they can't make public comments because they all 
roughly said sort of we wish you luck with your project but uh the king or queen can't give advice yeah um and yeah then there were just a few like sort of blank the prime minister can't fulfill your request so i was a bit sad because i thought trudeau would probably like give me some <laughs> advice but no um but that's okay that's fine so who did uh, you get at, uh, to uh, yeah college? okay so it was the biggest one was Jacinda Ardern. That's the one that everyone always focuses on, mm. uh, which was really cool. She's definitely the most well-known mm -hmm. uh, leader, and uh, you know we can get onto her advice. But yeah. I thought it was and, pretty and solid. Just, just for the listeners, where where where's she from? What she's the Prime Minister of New Zealand. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, uh, other other leaders were it was it was quite a variety. So it was like the prime minister of barbados who actually happened to go to lse as well so that's kind of cool wow. you know same yeah. same uni i went to or i'm going to um the president of switzerland if you want to get really technical like he's not really the leader uh, like lots of swiss people were getting really angsty in the comments about <laughs> that but it, it was more I, I tried to explain that in a 60 second video i can't i can't go that deep mm. um the president of romania president of slovenia um recently i think the i think it's the president of the philippines um but those are a few yeah mm -hmm. it, it's uh I, I i i'm happy with the level of responses like if i w wasn't to get any more then i I'd, I'd be comfortable yeah yeah and in terms of the actual advice that you got was it kind of varied or was it along similar lines of where they were coming from like what sort mm -hmm. of, what sort of responses did you get yeah well see this i guess this is the really interesting thing the, the number one thing i learned is it's, it's really hard to give unique advice like mm -hmm. it's so especially if you want to be universal uh I, th I think it's a lot easier if you're trying to get really practical um or technical with it but if you want to give broad universal advice it's quite difficult um but interestingly i think it's often the sort of cliched overused advice that we and like most people in general probably ignore the most because it, it just feels like well yeah obviously mm -hmm. and then we just go about our lives um so the first piece of advice that i got from the president of switzerland i think sort of underpins the whole project itself which was uh be as open as possible and really simple uh you don't have to dig that deep but <clears throat> There, there are so many uh, examples of that being true in, in real life. Uh, for example, if you want to go to Formula One, uh, Toto Wolff, who's the team principal uh, at Mercedes, um, he was on Nico Rosberg's podcast a few years ago. And Nico was talking about how the one fundamental change that happened with, with Toto coming into the team was that before people were scared to speak up, but once he had come you know people became a lot more comfortable being open and because mm. they knew he was going to listen to them and he talks about how whenever he hears an opinion that's different to his own he tries to approach it with curiosity not mm. combat uh which is you know super great but there was a really nice practical example and that's what i found with everything is you know call it cliche all you want but often when someone says oh you need to be more open we'll say yes and agree and then not really do it in our everyday lives like the irony is if you're closed-minded you would never consider that you're not open-minded <laughs> which is like so so yeah that that was one example um but i think all the advice um was was pretty pretty solid and you can always almost because it's so simple and concise like they're really nice sound bites mm. so yeah, yeah. And after sort of like completing this sort of project and, and, and getting a certain number of responses and then a certain number of, you know, polite declines and then a, mm -hmm. a, 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 a certain number of just straight no responses, <laughs> um, it kind of sort, sort of goes to show that things are achievable, right? Yeah. You know, like if you actually go out and do, like don't ask, don't get, right? You know? Sure. Um, so that's why you kind of got to ask people, you know, for example, do you want to come on my podcast, you know, or, mm -hmm. or, or ask world leaders, like, <laughs> can I have some advice, please? <laughs> you know, because yeah. chances are you might get it if you're not, if you don't, mm -hmm. don't buy a ticket, don't win the raffle, or whatever the saying sure. is, you know. So um, but was there anything else that you sort of took away from the whole project overall as sort of like learning, like any lessons from it or anything mm -hmm. that you took away from it in particular? Yeah. So I think, I think the one thing to keep in mind, maybe on the don't ask, don't get 
is 100% true. I think the issue a lot of people make is um, not asking in a good way. Uh, right. Like you have to be, you have to be really open and honest, especially if you're reaching out to someone big. Like, what what can I actually do to make this worthwhile? Mm. Um, like, people like to get really uh, combative when you talk about sort of the value exchange. Uh, and a hundred percent, I think I think try to give more than you get, but when it comes to reaching out to other people uh especially who are bigger than you normally you have to come and offer them some sort of value uh mm. because otherwise it's it's the sort of what's in it for them mm. so with the world leader letters obviously i can't really offer them anything <laughs> but what i could do was you know make it as easy as possible for them to respond so that yeah. so that was like really simple things of i made sure my question was simple they could answer it in like one word i did have one one word response it was from the uh president of czechoslovakia or the czech republic czechoslovakia doesn't exist anymore um which was just courage with an exclamation mark so i made it very easy for them to respond yeah. you know i put that question in bold and sure i gave a bit of information about myself but they didn't have to read that if they didn't want to yeah um so, so i think in terms of a practical lesson like being really open and honest about how can i maximize my chances of actually you know getting something um, what what can I do to make it as easy for them as possible? I, I think that's something good to keep in mind, whether it's you're looking for a job or um, trying to trying to get advice. Mm, yeah, yeah, and persistence as well, I suppose as well. You know, like with 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 persistence and stuff like that, things do happen. Like for example, mm -hmm. think about your TikTok. You know, it took a little while for that to sure. to really yeah. get get running and stuff. You know, and, and mm -hmm. with world leaders, you know, got to write in a certain number of letters to get a response, <laughs> right? So yeah. Uh, yeah, awesome stuff, man. Okay, so let's we're we're getting towards the the other end of this podcast now. So I'm I'm just want to ask you a little bit about your advice for young people. You've had a lot of mm -hmm. advice from some of the people in the in some of the highest stations in their country, <laughs> you know. So um, what would be some key key piece of advice which you'd give to other young people? You know, people that are aspiring to succeed, mm -hmm. people that are driven. Yeah, I mean, what a loaded question. Um, I I think it's yeah like I learn is really hard to give something that hasn't been said before, mm. uh, but equally, if you hear something enough times, one of the times is going to click. Yeah. So, I I think one is, um, and obviously it's going to sound cliche because most advice is, uh, yeah. but p people yeah people like I'm sure you preach a lot on the podcast. Uh, people severely underestimate what is within the realms of possibility, like especially mm. today. Um, I was listening to a podcast with uh, Naval Ravikant. I'm not mm. sure if you've, yeah, yeah. yeah. Love him, so, man. I love him. So he, he said something that I thought was really great and that I probably say too often to my friends. Uh, but he, he said that, you know, today, especially in the internet age, uh, like the amount of leverage we have is, is so much higher in terms of the influence the influence I have, um, not like trying to be uh, arrogant or cocky or anything, but like 300,000 people is a substantial amount of people. And the videos I can put out can reach that amount of people or more. If this had been like 30 years ago, I could reach my friends. Mm. Like maybe I would get in the local paper and get really lucky. Mm. But like the amount of reach you have today is so much higher so therefore the amount of impact you can have is is so much like it's uh, it's unreal is you actually cannot like it goes beyond all the numbers on the screen goes beyond like what you can actually fathom like the amount of followers i have is like three times the population of the island i'm from um and and it's just yeah you can't comprehend so i think it, people need to be a lot more willing to just take the chance on the the weird idea you know that's what i did with the world leader letters mm. um even even if i'd had like five responses and nothing else had come from it that would have been fine um but often you, you go down so many more so many more uh, like paths as a result the me me being faced with sort of um the potential for a book deal was like the classic case of luck is when preparation meets opportunity like i had the good story um i i had a decent following 
and then I was presented with the opportunities so I could actually take an advantage of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I think just being prepared to pursue like every idea and that that doesn't have to be a big thing i think some people it can be a small thing of like oh i should go for a run yeah like do it they it can be very very simple um yeah so i think that's my my ranty answer mm, yeah i always kind of say to sort of like follow your heart <laughs> which is mm-hmm. another massive cliche but sure. if you kind of follow that like natural intuition or call it just nat- your natural curiosity or something mm-hmm. like that good things come from that you know i, th- I think i, I think Nat Nav- ravikant actually says that he says it just when reading or, 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 mm-hmm. or pursuing, um, you know, whatever in life, you just got to follow your natural curiosity because that will lead yeah. you, A, to, to, you know, what's meant for you, what's what, mm-hmm. you know, i.e. the things you're interested in or whatever. And B, if you're, if you're naturally curious about it, you're going to be able to pursue that because there's probably mm-hmm. some, some, some form of passion in there or something that's going to keep you driving and keep you going towards yeah. that. So. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Are we are we allowed to talk about the the, the book deal at all? Is is that so? I mean, all, all I'm hopefully finding out how that's going like this week. But what mm. I can say is like uh, I'm in talks with a UK publisher. I've done my proposal, so that involved doing like sample writing, sample chapters, mm. and then <clears throat> so nonfiction is different to fiction. In that, in fiction, unless you're a really big author. You normally have to write the damn thing and then and then try and sell it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in nonfiction, you're quite lucky in that you can, in effect, try and sell a publisher on the idea mm-hmm. of the book. Um, so, yeah, that that was that was a process that's maybe taken about two two months ish. Um, quite intense. I've really enjoyed it. I'd recommend um, to anyone, <clears throat> whether it be journaling or you want to start a blog or something, just writing more is really good because. Mm you're forced to express your ideas um, yeah. like effectively. Like when we when we think of different things, um, whether it be our own emotions or anything, we tend to make like some very illogical leaps. And when you actually write it down, then you mm. tend to start seeing, like the amount of times I've, I've been like struggling with something and then I'll start writing about it and then realize that the answer is really obvious is, yeah. is insane. Um, and equally, yeah, like I said, you just are forced to formulate your ideas um, mm. cohesively. So I, I found it really rewarding um, to write, but it's also, <clears throat> sometimes it is just a case of like sitting down there for an hour, sort of banging your head against the wall and just trying to figure it out. Because <laughs> yeah, with a book, I think um, Ryan Holiday, who's the writer of um, like the Daily Stoic and books like that, mm. I think it was him that said that when you go into a writing, like the really difficult thing is uh, you're going up against, on TikTok, I'm going against up against like three years of content from like millions of people. Whereas when you're writing, you're go, going up against like books that have been proven to be like ridiculously good. We're talking about like the best of the best for the past two, 3,000 years. Like that's the, that's the bar. Mm. So for me, there's just a lot more pressure on that medium than than TikTok, um, especially because with a TikTok, I'm asking for 60 seconds of your time and I'm giving it to you for free. Mm. <laughs> with a with a book, I'm asking you for money and then I'm going to take even more of your time. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it, there's a there's a lot of pressure, but uh, I I found it enjoyable uh, for mm. sure. A struggle, I, but enjoyable. I- can I ask what the book's about? Are we allowed sure, to sure. Um, well, so it's it the the book is um, based on the uh, advice from the world leaders. Yep. So uh, the the general premise is uh, this this idea that the advice that we think of as being the most cliched or 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 um, simple overused is the advice we overlook the most, mm. um, and just trying my best to. Is I f- I feel like there's so much stigma attached to self help, so I I would say it's describe it more as like a book of practical lessons, mm. um, mm-hmm. and trying to make it somewhat anecdotal um, with lessons from my own life because I, I appreciate the irony of like being an 18 year old like trying to preach um, sort of lessons and stuff because. I can relate. You know, I, yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't have it all figured out. Uh, I'm never going to claim to. Uh, I'm, I'm. All I do is ex- express my thoughts regularly. That's mm. that's all I do. Yeah. 
mm. yeah. exactly saying here no one's a finished article you know we're all just sort mm. of uh, exactly. process stuff and uh, yeah awesome getting towards the end of the podcast now what do you believe brings a happy fulfilled life I know this is such a uh, <laughs> such a big question you know, and question. I've got I've got an even bigger question after this so prepare yourself dude but mm-hmm. um, you know what would be your 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 sort of perspective on that yeah right because okay. the podcast is happy. called happy days you know so mm, uh, yeah happy fulfilled i i would say that yeah i i think it links back to what i talked about earlier in the podcast of is distinguishing between happiness and joy of, of happiness is like when the money's coming in your inbox is at zero life is good like that's happiness and it, circumstances will be out of your control which means you cannot be happy all the time Mm. like that's a fact Mm. uh what you can try to do um is to be prepared to embrace the imperfection a bit more in a way that will make you more sort of content with life Mm. like i think uh it's it's really important to define what each of the words means and for me it that is that happiness is sort of circumstantial joy can be more permanent although Mm. again there's there's only so much you can do uh fulfillment is fulfillment ties to um to joy because i think in order to be fulfilled uh consistently you actually have to be prepared to be more accepting of things as they are Mm. which is really hard because I can't remember who it was, but I was watching a YouTube video which was really um, good and talking about how the problem with ambition is that ambition means that you are on some level unhappy with your current circumstance, which is what's pushing you to like go further. So, so it's, it's really hard to be content and ambitious, uh, which I don't think, may, I'm sure people might disagree with me because that doesn't sound that good. Um, that sounds very, um, I don't know, almost a bit depressing. But I, I think it's maybe a bit of a harsh truth of some of the time you need to sit back and like accept what you have. But equally, you're not going to be ambitious then. Um, so it's it's just trying to find a balance of the two. Maybe it's finding the dis- uh, distinction between like being comfortable and happy being comfortable and aware of the fact that getting this next thing isn't going to make you happier mm. but you know getting so much enjoyment out of the process i, th- I think yeah. most most ambitious people um and i this was a line uh that i read in how to win friends and influence people like i finished the book like yesterday um and it was like most most successful people are successful because they love the game like that's that's the main thing mm. they they constantly want to like one up prove their worth and that's a dangerous thing because mm. you might not feel comfortable but if if you can do it right then hopefully you can get enough satisfaction from the game uh which i think is again that's quite hard because of the connotations of like the pickup artistry book from like 15 years ago <laughs> but um yeah yeah that's um i think it's finding finding the distinction between happiness and joy and then realizing that fulfillment relies on a certain level of acceptance with Mm. your current situation yeah that's a really like mature answer and it's exactly what (laughs) i live my my life by now honestly i do like Mm -hmm. when i first got into this sort of like whole whole scene especially with the podcast and stuff it all kind of stemmed from me reading a philosophy book it, and it was mm-hmm. it was a seneca book on the shortness of oh life. nice bit of stoicism <laughs> yeah i love it man i love it and it, uh, it just blew my mind blew my mind to, uh-huh. to self-help blew my mind to like philosophy and stuff like that mm-hmm. and from that obviously you start reading like meditations marcus Aurelius, and stuff yeah. like that you know and uh, classic yeah and um yeah, just the, the the entire way that I live my life just totally changed. The way I look at life changed. I think that's what mm-hmm. it is. It's it's that it's that perspective change. It's when you start focusing on different things, or or not even focusing on anything at all in some ways, and just trying to live peacefully. You know, not sure. flip flopping between happiness, sadness, chasing mm-hmm. happiness, running away from sadness. Just 
settle things down, you know, and just yeah. enjoy the ride. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome Definitely. answer, dude. Love it, love it. Um, Final question now, man. This is a big one. Super subjective, super cliche, but always a lot of fun to ask everyone. I want to ask you, Leo, <laughs> what is your meaning of life? <laughs> Yeah, so this is actually the one question that I did have a bit of a think about because <laughs> I, I knew that I wouldn't be able to um, answer effectively otherwise. I think it comes down to um, just just like a lot of great ideas, this is completely stolen and not my own. Uh, but it, it comes back to what we talked about earlier um, of it is story, like all, all day, every day is story mm-hmm. because... I think I think the moment you start thinking about what the story of your life actually is, um, it, it flips your perspective a bit. Uh, you you become a bit more concerned with like what's going to be an interesting experience, um, and the thing is, coming back to the whole fulfillment thing that you talked about. Uh, the reason I think that you need a certain level of struggle in your life is. In order for us to value something, there has to be a certain level of struggle involved in getting it. So mm-hmm. when things are financially expensive, you need to earn the money. If uh, you have to get in good shape, you're, you're going to have to go to the gym. And that's why we ascribe value to these things. So you need a certain level of struggle in your story in order to be fulfilled because you're achieving things that you find valuable. Um, and then, like I said, if, if you can try to... <clears throat> try to help other people in their stories, um, try and be a part of their story. So if you were to go, uh, they'd be happier because they had met you. Like that sounds selfish, but I, I would argue that it's selfless because if you're mm. trying to be a big and important part of other people's stories, um, you're trying to help them, uh, you're, you know, you're being altruistic in your approach sort of thing. Uh, and also, I guess, if you're trying to help other people with their stories, you'll probably end up having a good one yourself as well. Mm, awesome stuff, dude. Thank you so much for joining me for the episode. Thanks Just for, for the listeners, um, where, can we, where can we find you online? Sure. So on, on TikTok, um, I'm at dot Leo Olson. But if you just search Leo Olson, I'll come up. Uh, I'm on Instagram as well. I, I need to post more. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, you can just search Leo Olson. I'll, I'll come up. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking hopefully to start YouTube soon, but it's handling, handling a 60 second video is, is a lot more, um, yeah, yeah it's a lot easier than <laughs> sort of five, 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's the plan. Awesome stuff, but Yeah, man. thanks a lot for having me. Oh, mate, thank you for coming. I mean, this was, um, a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. And it's nice <laughs> to have, like, someone who's, just, like, it's mind-blowing how I'll take you articulate you are for Thank an you. 18 year old like it actually blows my mind and it's uh <laughs> it's a pretty sweet gift man so uh, make sure you use it but um i appreciate yeah it. mate it's been a lot of fun and uh, it's been go- so good to meet you and uh talk about some uh, really awesome stuff so thank you dude really appreciate That's it great. thanks a lot so there you go that's the end of the show If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe on your podcasting app of choice so you can download and listen as each episode is released. If this episode helped you in any way, tell your friends, tell your family, maybe even leave a cheeky review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps the show. But that's all for now. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next episode released shortly. Take care.